One of the aspects of this work that is always a bit of a problem is how the triggering works. Now you'll see on this end of the oscilloscope over here all of those functions down there have to do with triggering. What does triggering actually do? Well, let's have a look at the functioning of the oscilloscope and there's a bit more detail of what I'm speaking about in the green manual with a bit of a drawing and so on. The way that an oscilloscope works is this. There's an electron gun at the back of the oscilloscope that fires out a stream of electrons that come forward and they hit the screen and wherever it hits the screen it leaves a bright dot. Now there are two sets of plates in the back there, electrically charged plates, and the top and the bottom plates, Y plates, will be charged such that they can move the dot up and down, and the left and right plates, the X plates, will be charged such that it can move the dot backwards and forwards. And what happens on these X plates, which is the time base, there is what we call a sawtooth function applied. In other words, it starts at some negative voltage, creeps slowly up to a positive voltage and then flies back. And we can see that by setting the... And there you can see on the X-plates, charging up, flying back, charge up, fly back, charge up, fly back. And as, it, as we change the time base to go faster and faster and faster, so eventually it looks as if this thing is just a solid line. The problem that we've got is that when we apply a voltage to an input channel, either channel 1 or a channel 2, depends on which one you're using, what that voltage does is it pulls the dot up and down. So the applied voltage is in top and bottom, pulling the dot up and down, and we've got the time-based voltage pulling the dot from left to right, sweeping across the screen. And one of the things we've got to do is we've got to synchronize this up and down with the left and right, because if you don't synchronize these two things, you'll lose the triggering. I'm sourcing the start point of the time base with some start point on the input signal, so that as this moves across the screen, so I get that piece of the picture. And it flies back, and it'll synchronize and start again, and it'll give me the same picture over and over and over. But what will happen if I lose the triggering? Well, I can show that quite easily. If I select a source to a signal that doesn't exist, you can see that this runs away, and the reason why it runs away is that it cannot synchronize whatever the input signal is to the time-based signal. Whenever you have this condition, where the signal is running backwards and forwards uncontrollably, you can be pretty sure you've got a triggering problem. Go back to the source that it can find, and you see the signal settles back to some regular pattern.